Hey Aries, welcome to your reading for November 1st through the 7th. This is going to be for Aries, Sun, Moon, and Rising. Uh, oops. <laughs> if you happen to stumble upon this video outside of the time frame I mentioned, uh, don't you worry, you found it when you were meant to find it, and when it was time for you to hear the messages in it. Keep in mind that these are general readings. Not every message will resonate. Take what does, leave the rest. Now we're coming into new moon energy in the week ahead. So we're going to see how the energies are affecting Aries. What's going on for you guys. Anything to look out for. Anything to know. To be aware of. Aries, sun, moon, and rising. One more shuffle here. One more. I just want... Okay. Alright. That feels nice and thoroughly shuffled. I just like to make sure the cards are shuffled well. First card coming up here for Aries is the tower. You guys are like, great. <laughs> right out the gate. Now, don't fret. This is not a negative thing. Um, first and foremost, we came out of a really massive energy in that full moon in Aries that we had previously, right? The last full moon we had was in Aries. You guys are Aries, right? So you may have felt that energy uh, more strongly than you typically might feel a full moon energy. Uh, there was a lot of clearing that happened for a lot of people, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, you know, disconnecting from things that don't serve us, that are holding us back. And so the Tower card is that type of energy. It's uh, people don't realize that the Tower card can be positive things. It can be like landing your dream job, relocating, becoming a parent, getting married. It can be happy and positive things. It doesn't have to be doom and gloom. But even when it's a big shift, it's something that's pushing us out of our comfort zone. And it's happening to free us and to liberate us. So even when the Tower card is not the happiest uh, thing happening, it's an act of love through our angels and guides that are getting us unstuck. It's like a cosmic prison break. So to be starting off with the tower basically means you're starting off and coming to this week having been liberated in one way or another, okay? In different circumstances for different ones of you. Uh, I know a lot of people get nervous about the tower card. I don't typically pull clarifiers in the YouTube videos that I post. I'll pull clarifiers when I do private readings, but... Because I know the tower freaks a lot of people out. We're going to go ahead and pull some clarifiers here for you for the tower. Please show us clarifier one. Please show us clarifier two. Please show us clarifier three. If I'm not mistaken, Virgo also got the tower. Some of you could be dealing with a Virgo. Oh, ha <laughs> ha! Speak of the devil. King of Pentacles, there could be a Virgo in the mix for some of you. Queen of Cups. And the Five of Cups. Uh, there could be a relationship that is not going as you had hoped or not going as you had anticipated. For some of you, this can be an issue regarding the raising of children. I'm getting that feeling or that vibe not being on the same page regarding children. Um, for some of you, I feel like you were making a deal with somebody. Maybe it was something around custody. Maybe it was something around parental rights. Maybe it was a business deal or a financial agreement that had nothing to do with kids at all. But I feel for some reason like it's not moving forward. It's not being accepted. So you're like, whoa, maybe you had all your eggs in that basket, so to speak. And that's how you thought you were going to be moving forward through a situation. And it's like, no, you're not going to be moving forward in the situation in this way. You're going to have to come up with another plan or another idea. But I feel the reason for it is that there is some kind of cosmic shifting here and breaking away. It would have caused you to be really held down overly obligated, uh, maybe connected or attached to places or people that bring you down or are not meant for you right now or trigger you in some kind of way. And your angels and guides were like, look, you know, uh, uh, no. It's funny because I keep hearing deal with the devil, Aries. I keep hearing deal with the devil, right? Maybe for some of you, it's not, maybe it's not an earth sign person. Maybe it's not a Virgo. It could be a parent that you were trying to make a, a deal or agreement with. But then on the other hand of that, 
is that if you do accept their help, then you're also going to have to accept their criticism and their rules and their requirements. So even though you saw it as like, this is something that's going to save you or help you, it was also going to keep you bound. And your angels and guides are like, no Aries, we don't want to see you bound. We don't want to see you tied up. There might be a, a quick, uh, convenient, uh, you know, benefit to this agreement, but the ways in which you're paying in the long run is too expensive emotionally, energetically, spiritually. So your angels and guides are not going to allow this deal to move forward or, or to go through. So you're having to figure out things your own way without relying on this person or situation. You might be disappointed. You might be sad. You might be upset. But this is happening to liberate you so that you can have a happy life and you can live in your authenticity and you can live in your freedom without being so stifled or edited or watered down or controlled. Your next card coming up here, my dear Aries, is the Eight of Swords. So you may be feel, feeling kind of stuck and disappointed about this, right? Like now what? Now, now my hands are tied. Now I'm trapped, right? I thought that I was going to be able to count on this person or situation. They're bailing on me. They're not helping me. And we might be like waiting to find out who is going to help me. Who can I work with? Who can I bring in here? This can be a little bit dangerous, Anytime we're in the Eight of Swords energy and we have this feeling of being stuck and wanting somebody to come in and take us by the hand and, and lead us out of it, we have to keep in mind that like attracts like and energy attracts energy. So when we're in this uh, feeling powerless and like looking for someone to come in and help us, best case scenario, best case scenario you're going to attract someone who feels just as lost as you do and they're looking at you to figure it out and you're looking at them to figure it out and then you start getting frustrated and you start getting angry. I thought you knew. How come I have to think of everything? Why don't you think of something? And it's just two people that are like wandering aimlessly. That's the best case scenario. The worst case scenario is you attract someone who's an opportunist, somebody who sees you in a moment of weakness and you have something they want and they're going to use a situation to get it from you, whether it's getting in your pants, getting in your pockets, getting in your pockets through your pants, whatever it might be, right? Someone who's taking advantage of the situation. Eight of Swords wants you to know the situation's not as bad as you're thinking or as that you're looking at it. You have a lot of wiggle room here. That rope is not around you all that tight. You can wiggle out of it. You can push that blindfold off your eyes. You can see. And these swords that you think are keeping you trapped are not keeping you trapped. Heck, you can even grab a couple and take them on the road with you as protection, as tools. So there are solutions available to you. This is the thing, Aries. A lot of you are working on a really big shift right now. You're not happy with the people around you. You want a new beginning. You want a fresh start. You want more high vibe people. And you're wanting to get out of the current situation. And you're looking to like form alliances with people around you. But Spirit is saying this is the old energy. So if you form alliances with these people, you're not going to break out of this energy. You're going to be stuck in it. You got to step outside of the circle, step out of the energy. Then you're going to start to encounter people that you're meant to have alliances with. So in the beginning, you're taking the first few steps alone. You're not meant to be alone forever, but you need to take the first few steps alone so that you're not taking old energy with you. The next card coming up here for Aries is the Ten of Cups. So see, look, you're headed to a good place. Ten of Cups is a very happy card. I know a lot of people are used to watching Tarot for Love and Romance readings. And so for that reason, Ten of Cups gets typecast as like a marriage card and specifically marriage and babies. That can be the case for some of you. You may be, you know, moving towards marriage and babies um, or a sense of family, a sense of home. But on a broader, deeper layer here, the Ten of Cups is about inner peace and fulfillment. It's about satisfaction and joy in every area of your life. So Ten of Cups is going to look very different for different ones of you. For some of you, Ten of Cups is that ideal traditional marriage, babies, white picket fence, you know, all that, all that stuff. For other ones of you, it might be the ability to travel freely. For other ones of you, it might be a, a partner that you're able to have as a companion, but you don't necessarily want to be married or you don't necessarily want to be living with the person, right? For some of you, you want to have a home with someone. You want to have a couple of little fur babies or do volunteering or activism together or whatever it might be, right? Whatever your Ten of Cups is, 
you're moving into that energy, you're in, moving into that fulfillment. So as we're coming into the new moon, the manifesting period, you are manifesting inner peace and fulfillment in every aspect of your life. That is very beautiful and that is very powerful and that's very exciting to know, Aries. Your next card coming up here is the Page of Cups. Now, this can come up in a couple of different ways. Court cards traditionally tarot are going to be seen as people. So it could be dealing with a younger or youthful or playful water sign person, which could be Scorpio, Pisces, or Cancer. If you have a water sign placement, that aspect of yourself may be coming here uh, to the surface. Pages can also have to do with children, grandchildren. Uh, so maybe spending time with kids or doing something with kids. But for me in my readings, Page of Cups invites us to play. It's a sense of playfulness, specifically because for me in my readings, Page of Cups is connected with the heart chakra opening up. When the heart chakra opens up, it's opening up so that we can receive, right? We can give and we can receive. And that process can feel really overwhelming when the heart is first opening up. We feel very overwhelmed by it. So to make it easier on ourselves, it's good to adapt a sense of playfulness, a sense of rest, giving ourselves permission to take little timeouts, take a moment or two, maybe take a nap, maybe go do something fun and, and get the pressures and the stresses off of our mind. But it's a sense of opening up and taking it easy, not pushing yourself too hard or too fast or too soon. Okay, bringing playfulness, uh, healing through play. Healing doesn't always have to be excruciating uh, shadow work. Uh, don't get me wrong, it's, you know, excruciating shadow work is a very important aspect of healing and it's unavoidable. But there's also the aspect of healing that comes through play. And so you're being encouraged to play, to, to experience playfulness in the coming weeks as you're going through these transitions and changes and breaking free from the old and stepping into the new. You may want to check out your moon sign and rising sign videos. Some weeks those are going to resonate for you more than your sun sign. You may need a private reading, which I'm more than happy to do for you. If you want to go to calendly.com slash amethyst angelite, you can schedule a private reading with me there. Um, thank you so much. Those of you who have sent tips and donations, I'm in the process of getting caught up on emails so I can email people and let them know and say, thank you. Um, I do appreciate you guys more than, you know, it means more than, you know, I thank you all for watching, liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing, have a wonderful week, my dears. Take care. Oh, love and romance readings for November are linked in the description. If you want to watch the love readings they are in the description, take care, my dears.